The Prime Minister is due to lay out his roadmap out of lockdown in about 10 days' time. The government says the number of Covid patients in hospitals will be a key factor in deciding when restrictions should be lifted. There's significant pressure on the Prime Minister from MPs on his own back benches who want the lockdown lifted and fear that the goalposts may be moving. One of them is the Conservative MP Geoffrey Clifton Brown. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so, Geoffrey, for joining us. Uh, so, when Boris Johnson sets out his roadmap in the week after next sometime, uh, what are you hoping he says? Well, I think what he's got to really consider is the balance between keeping us locked up and uh, the damage that that could do to the rest of the nation in terms of people's individual health, their mental health, possible suicides, the immense damage to business as opposed to um, keeping the COVID situation under control. And I'm not sure that he's got the balance right. He's talking about letting schools go back on a phase basis at the beginning of March, which is causing teachers anxiety because they've got to keep a hybrid system of virtual and actual learning. He's talking about shops being open in April and pubs and clubs, my hospitality industries in the Cotswolds in May. Now, that is far too long. They're absolutely pulling their hair out. And I think he's got to get this balance between keeping us safe from COVID but allowing the economy to open up and start to function, our lives function as normally yeah. as possible. But lifting lockdowns too soon didn't go so well last year. We had a second lockdown lockdown by, what was it, early November. We, then after Christmas, we had another lockdown early January. And also, we've had 60,000 COVID deaths since November. Yes, but that was before we had a vaccination programme. Now, we know mercifully that the first four cohorts are likely to be met by the 15th of February. That accounts for about 80% of all the uh, death the cases that are likely to people are likely to die. Mm. So there is no reason why April, the vast bulk of the economy, shops, clubs, pubs, restaurants, shouldn't be allowed to begin to open. Right, so it really is essential. So you would start opening up before elderly, vulnerable people had had their second jabs, would you? Well, they're, they're well protected after the first jab. The second jab will be beginning in March for a large number of people. Mm. So by April, not only should the most vulnerable, those one to four groups, have been vaccinated, but I would guess most of the one to nine groups will have been vaccinated. So we will have vaccinated a very significant proportion of the vulnerable people in this country. So there is no reason why we shouldn't begin to open up the economy. The, the, and, and, and we got to, in Parliament, vote on the extension of this regime or something to replace it on the 29th of March. And I think the Prime Minister will need to think very carefully the yeah. programme he puts in place of it, because otherwise he's likely to get a difficult time in Parliament. But he's being told by people like Susan Hopkins, who was speaking on Sky News on the, the Learn the Lessons programme the other night, um, that there should be restrictions. Uh, they should last until at least all adults have been vaccinated. And, and I guess by vaccinated, she means two doses. That could be much later in the year, couldn't it? And I guess the whole point is, while we've got the vaccine programme, let's protect it and just, you know, be very cautious about this over the next few months. As I say, if you're too cautious, you do equally as much damage as if you lock down, uh, unlock at a sensible time. We've got to start to get this nation back to normality in a relatively soon timetable. We've got the vaccination programme. It will have vaccinated a significant proportion of the vulnerable adults in this country by April, and we really need to considering opening up the economy then. So, so um, when would you be thinking of opening bars and restaurants and gyms and so forth? Well, if the, if the pattern of hospital cases is the same throughout the country as it is in Gloucestershire, which seen, has seen a significant fall in the last week or so, I can see no reason why those sorts of hospitality industries shouldn't be able to open in, in uh, really by Easter, at the beginning of April, but certainly uh, during the month of April. And, and they are really being hammered at the moment because... Uh, they are uh, industries uh, that have very little financial backup behind them. If they miss both Easter 
and the May bank holiday, they will be in serious trouble. So uh, opening um, bars and restaurants um, here, what about people heading off on holidays, even in this country um, or um, certainly abroad? What, what is your view of that this, this summer? Because that raises a different issue of people coming back with, with, from countries that, where vaccination is not as progressed as ours. Exactly. I think people travelling abroad is much more tricky because they will be going to countries that haven't had the comprom comprehensive or early vaccine programme that we have. So I take a, a, a much more uh, realistic view of that. People going for staycations in this country, for goodness sake, our hospitality industries in places like the Cotswolds desperately need these people to come here. And people are getting pretty fed up, if not more than fed up, by being locked in their own homes. And it really is about time we get back to normality and allow people to go on a staycation. There's no reason at all mm. why that shouldn't be able to happen uh, late, late April or early May. I mean, I've talked to a lot of business people and they say the one thing we don't want, definitely don't want, is a fourth lockdown. So would it be better to take it cautiously, take it slowly and, you know, make sure that the as many people as possible can be um, vaccinated? Well, of course, this is a matter of difficult judgment. But I would say that if you've, as I've already pointed out, I'm sorry to repeat it, vaccinated mm -hmm. a significant proportion of the vulnerable uh, people, adults in this nation, and that is a very different situation to what we had at Christmas, where nobody or virtually nobody had been vaccinated. So I think what they should do is go back to the tiers situation, allow areas like mine in the Cotswolds, which currently has a pretty low level of inflection, infection, below 80 cases per 100,000, allow them to gradually open and just see how it goes. Well, I accept we don't want things opening and having to be immediately closed again, but my guess is with this vaccine, it could be done perfectly safely. So you're talking really about opening up before scientists are sure about this issue of transmission after having a vaccine. So there is a risk here. So you say, you know, we'll see how it goes. Once you open up, you, you open up, don't you? Well, what we do know, what we, the, what, we, what we do have fairly hard evidence is that there's pretty good protection to the individuals that have been vaccinated. That is, as I say, in groups one to four, at least accounts for at least 80% of all those that have um, uh, had sadly passed away so far. So you are taking out or protecting quite a big section of the population that is the most vulnerable. And I think we're beginning to see evidence now that actually not only does it protect the individual, but it does provide some protection of actually uh, the transmissibility of the disease. OK, uh, Sir Geoffrey Clifton-Brown, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.